Hey, welcome back to another video on integration by parts. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do integration by parts the fast way. So if you've been watching the previous few videos, you will have seen like the full method. Um, but I know that on an exam, ain't nobody got time for that. So we're going to always try to look for situations where you can apply this the fast way. And you're going to be able to solve these problems like way, way faster than doing it the, the full way. So in order to solve a integration by parts problem the fast way, we have to be able to split the integrand into two different parts, where one part, so actually we can identify here, we have two parts, we have x to the 5 and we have ex dx. Um, to apply this the fast way, one part has to tend to zero after successive derivations, and the other part has to be easy to integrate. So in this case, x to the 5th would tend to zero with successive derivations. And e to the x dx is easy to integrate. So if you can split your integrand into two parts like that, then you can apply integration by parts the fast way. So all you have to do is just write each part. So let's write x to the fifth on one side and e to the x dx on the other side. And we're just going to apply our successive derivations to the part that is going to tend to zero. So in that case, it's going to be the x to the fifth. So we're going to take the derivative of x to the fifth, and that is just going to be equal to 5x to the four. We're going to take the derivative of that again, which is going to be 20x to the three. We'll derive it again, which will be 60x squared. We derive it again, which is 120x. We derive that again, 120. And then we derive it again and we're left with zero. So you see these successive derivations have tended to zero. And then we're just going to successively integrate the other part. So the integral of e to the x is just e to the x. And the integral of e to the x is just e to the x and so forth and so on. In this case, you can just ignore the integration constant for now. Um, if, as long as you remember to put it back in at the end of the problem. And now we just want to draw some diagonal lines going down where we alternate positive and minus between them. And the solution to our problem is just going to be the sum of products along the red lines. And we'll assign a plus or minus term for the summation depending on whether or not there's a plus or a minus on each red line. So let's just write that out. So we have i is just equal to x to the power of 5 times e to the x. This term is positive because we have a plus sign here on that first red line. Then the next line is a negative, so we'll assign that a negative, and it'll be 5x to the 4 times e to the x. The next line here is positive again, so we will assign that a plus, and that is going to be plus 20x to the 3 times e to the x. The next sign here is negative, so we'll assign the next term a negative sign, so we have minus 60x squared times e to the x. The next one is positive, so it's plus 120x times e to the x, and then the last one there is negative, minus 120 times e to the x. At this point, you should add in the plus c for the arbitrary constant. There would be an arbitrary constant from each term, but they would basically all just add up together in some way, shape, or form, and just all basically get reduced back down to one single arbitrary constant over here. So at this point, I just like to add it in. And at this point in the problem too, you can probably just simplify a little bit. And in this particular example, we can just pull out that e to the x, which is common to every single term and then otherwise just rewrite the expression. And that is actually the solution to our problem. So let's see if we can draw a little green square around it. And there we go. So that's just showing you that if you're able to identify that one part of the integrand will tend to zero after successive derivations and the other part is easy to integrate, you can just apply these steps and rapidly solve these problems, which is really good if you're in an exam and you don't have a lot of time. So guys, thanks for watching. I hope you found this helpful and I'll see you in the next example where we'll go over another one using integration by parts the fast way.